Edexcel A-Level Maths, Pure Paper 1, Summer 2019, Question 12. We've got that f of x equals 10 times e to the minus 0.25x times sine x for x larger than or equal to 0. We need to show that the x coordinates of the turning points of the curve with equation y equals f of x satisfy the equation tan x equals 4. So we're looking for turning points, so let's differentiate and find f dash x. So here's our f of x. We're going to differentiate this now. So we've got two things multiplying together. We've got the e to the minus 0.25x and we've got the sine x. So to differentiate this, we're going to do it in our two parts. So firstly, we're going to differentiate the e part of this. So the differential of e to the minus 0.25x, we bring down the minus 0.25. So multiplying by that by the 10 that's already there gives us minus 2.5 e, the power of e remains the same when we differentiate it, and we multiply by the other part as it still is, so sine x. We're then going to add the differential of sine x times by the 10e. So we get 10e to the minus 0.25x, and the differential of sine is cos, so that's what we multiply by. Now we need to find the turning point, so we're going to set all of this equal to zero. So we've now got an equation equal to zero. Both our terms have got, on the left-hand side, have got e to the minus 0.25x in there. So we can divide them away. We get minus 2.5 sine x plus 10 cos x equals zero. Adding 2.5 sine x to both sides, we get 2.5 sine x equals 10 cos x. Dividing both sides by cos and by 2.5 gives us sine over cos equals 10 over 2.5, hence tan x equals 4, as required. We've now got figure 3 showing a sketch of part of the curve with equation y equals f of x. We need to sketch the graph of h against t, where h of t equals the modulus of 10 e to the minus 0.25t sine t, showing the long-term behaviour of this curve. So, this equation is just the modulus of the one we had at the top. So it's the modulus of the graph that we've just been shown in figure three. So basically it's going to be the same graph, but anything that was negative now becomes positive. So it's going to look like this. Notice how the first and third and fifth loops are in the same place as they were in figure three but the loops that were under the curve in figure three are now above the curve, but exactly the same shape. They've just been reflected in the x-axis. The function ht is used to model the height in meters of a ball above the ground t seconds after it has been kicked. Using this model, we need to find the maximum height of the ball above the ground between the first and second bounce. So we know from our earlier question that tan of x equals 4. So if we can solve this, we're going to find our answer. So inverse tan of 4, putting this into the calculator, the answer we would get initially is 1.326. But this is the maximum height of the ball before the first bounce. We want the maximum height between the first and second bounces. So we're going to take the second answer, which is just your 1.326, add 2 pi, so 4.467. We then put this into our function h of t. So modulus of 10e to the minus 0.25 times 4.467 multiplied by sine of 4.467, which is, gives us 3.18 meters. For part d, we need to explain why this model should not be used to predict the time of each bounce. So if we look at our graph that we did earlier, here is what is happening with the ball. So we can see that the height of the bounce is reducing with each bounce. But if you think about what would happen if you were actually bouncing a ball and it was just left, the height was dropping each time, the bounces should get closer and closer together. But we can see from our graph that this isn't happening in this model.
If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.